millions and millions of our tax dollars going to maintain this empire overseas. And let us not forget that one of the things Osama bin Laden said that made him hate the United States was the presence of U.S. bases in holy lands in Saudi Arabia. In a letter to the United States people, he said, why are we fighting and opposing you? Your forces occupy our countries. You spread your military bases throughout. You corrupt our lands. We advise you to pack your bags and get out of our lands. Do not force us to send you back as cargo in coffins. And while the U.S. military has quietly abandoned the bases in Saudi Arabia, we have expanded them throughout the Middle East. And around the world, while not in the horribly violent fashion of, Saddam, of Osama bin Laden, there are movements all over the world to rid themselves of U.S. bases. Many of the reasons they don't want the U.S. bases there are because those bases are contaminating the lands, are destroying lands that belong to indigenous people, but also because of the prostitution that comes with U.S. bases. And more and more, they don't want to be targets of terrorist attacks themselves by being complicit through their bases of the U.S. attack on Iraq. In fact, in countries like Germany, you know Germany has more foreign U.S. bases than any other country in the world, and Germany is used as the stopping uh, ground for troops going in and out of Iraq on a regular basis. There is a large movement in Germany to stop having foreign bases on their soil. There is a very active movement in Italy where the U.S. wants to build yet another U.S. base in a beautiful town called Vicenza. I was recently there. This town has under 100,000 people. And at the demonstration I attended, there were over 100,000 people out in the streets saying no to another U.S. military base. One of the saddest examples of military bases overseas is the one in Guantanamo, where the U.S. back in 1903, as part of an invasion uh, that resulted in them having a treaty with the corrupt government of Cuba at that time, gave them, quote, the right to have that base in perpetuity. And I was recently, last year, in Guantanamo, the city of Guantanamo, doing a protest in front of the gates of Guantanamo to say close down the U.S. base and close down the U.S. prison in Guantanamo. The people in that city were devastated that their city that used to be known for that beautiful song, Guantanamera, you know that song? Guajira Guantanamera, are now known through the world as housing an infamous facility where people have been held without due process, held without trials, and have been tortured, and they are fighting to rid themselves of a U.S. base. So all over the world there are efforts to stop U.S. bases. One positive example is in Ecuador, where when Rafael Correa was running to become president, part of his platform was that he was going to close the U.S. military base in the city of Manta. And in fact, when some journalists said to him, well, why are you going to close the U.S. military base? That seems very anti-American. He laughed and he said, well, maybe if the U.S. allows us to have a military base in Miami, we might reconsider. Um, seeing as very funny, but showing how hypocritical the United States is, we would never allow any country anywhere to have a military base on our soil. So why should we expect that people around the world World would welcome a foreign military base on their soil. Well, he won the election, and he is keeping his commitment. When that uh, treaty for that base ends in 2009, he says he will not renew the military treaty for the U.S. to have a base there.
And because of that success, last year there was the first ever gathering of people around the world, 400 people from 40 different countries came together in Ecuador to build a movement calling for no foreign military bases. This is the first time we have a global structure to learn from each other on how we can, from the inside, try to stop this voracious empire and how they from the outside can try to regain their sovereignty. And I want to end with two positive ideas of what we could do. One is an idea of a vision of taking this vast network of 700 bases and think about how we could use that network and turn it into something so important for the planet as an echo development centers where these bases would not be the old model of aggression and contamination and militarism, but would be centers where we could learn together and support each other around the world in doing things like promoting water conservation and purification, biofuels, organic agriculture, permaculture, renewable energy, green building technology, integrated waste management, recycling, compost, Hosting, finding new alternative transportation, biodiesel centers, training people for the skills they need in the new grain economy, turning them into demonstration sites that would share innovations locally and globally. So I want you to just envision this idea of turning this network of bases into echo development centers where we would no longer be the bully in the world, but we, we, we would be part of partnership, of sharing, of caring, of finding solutions to the terrible crisis of global warming in this planet. And finally, I want to leave you with a beautiful message that I heard from somebody who's been elected democratically, unlike George Bush, with international monitors saying that these elections were free and fair, and that is Hugo Chavez. I was in Venezuela with one of the delegations we take, and it was a big stadium and Hugo Chavez was talking to the people about the problems of the empire and the empire trying to dominate the world. And he saw that we were a group of Americans there. And he stopped and he said, I want to recognize the group from the United States that's here. I want everybody to be clear that we are not talking about the people of the United States. We're talking about the government of the United States. And I want people to understand that the American people are also the people of Martin Luther King. The American people are victims of their own empire, their tax dollars going to war instead of health care, instead of education. And that we on the outside, while we are fighting to liberate ourselves from the empire, they are fighting from the inside to try to liberate themselves from the empire. And when we work together and and join hands across borders to do that, we will not only be liberating those who are victims of the empire like the people of Iraq, but we will be liberating the people of Martin Luther King. So let's hold that vision of liberation for all of us and say, power to the peaceful. We can make the transformations we need to see in the world if we work together and have the positive vision of compassion, sharing, and love for our neighbors on this planet. Thank you.